Welcome back, another episode. Please note that the following includes premiere spoilers for Chicago Fire Season 13. Proceed at your own peril. Well, Kelly Severide and Stella Kidd are not going to become parents anytime soon. When Severide said at the end of the previous season that he wanted to conceive a family, the pair eventually addressed the issue approximately halfway through Chicago Fire's season 13 opener. Is his spouse, however, in agreement? Following a terrifying rescue involving two small children, Stella admitted to her husband that she dreads receiving calls from youngsters. She continued, saying that she doesn't feel ready to have a kid just yet, and Severide seems to understand. Please note that the following includes premiere spoilers for Chicago Fire Season 13. Proceed at your own peril. Well, Kelly Severide and Stella Kidd are not going to become parents anytime soon. When Severide said at the end of the previous season that he wanted to conceive a family, the pair eventually addressed the issue approximately halfway through Chicago Fire's Season 13 opener. Is his spouse, however, in agreement? Following a terrifying rescue involving two small children, Stella admitted to her husband that she dreads receiving calls from youngsters. She continued, saying that she doesn't feel ready to have a kid just yet, and Severide seems to understand. Viewers and Stella herself will gain greater understanding of her hesitation to move on as the season goes on. Deeper, more private reasons will come to light in addition to the obligations that having a kid would place on Stella professionally as a woman in the Chicago Fire Department. During our fall preview Q&A, showrunner Andrea Newman told TV Line, We haven't really explored her background, her family, how she grew up. And as the question of starting her own family, she's going to go on a journey of her own to kind of explore more about why she feels the way she does about family. In the meantime, Severide's journey may be impacted, and their children's plans may be postponed as he deals with his own family turmoil with his recently disclosed half-brother Damon. In a way, I think it's inevitable that it does because Severide is going to manage this new, somewhat separate family responsibility all of a sudden, Newman says. The Severide, Stella family narrative and the Damon, Severide plot, however, are its own thing that coexist, as Newman puts it, so it informs it, but it doesn't really change it. Throughout the premiere, Dom Pascal, the new chief, introduced a number of changes to Firehouse 51, including the ban on cell phones during meals and the practice of having individual check-ins with each of his three lieutenants after calls. Pascal pointed out to Severide at their meeting that family members shouldn't work the same shift, therefore, he would be watching Severide and Stella. Stella, on the other hand, eventually retaliated against the new leader due to her intense longing for Bowden who she loved like a father. Severide and Stella also thought that Pascal didn't seem quite right. Pascal had received a strange visit from a former colleague who had learned of the events in Miami. After the show concluded, Pascal headed home, where his wife had shut him out. Nevertheless, he was able to seduce her into opening the door and giving him a kiss. After their one-on-one, -on -one, oddly enough, Herman warmed up to Pascal the most. Mouch questioned Herman's sincerity, questioning whether his absence from the captain's test was indeed due to illness. Mouch reassured Herman that he could achieve everything Pascal is doing and that he would be excellent at it just in case he was having self-doubts. Their professional fates are now intricately connected since Mouch intends to wait to take the lieutenant test until Herman advances in the ranks and a position becomes available at 51. According to Newman, there are twists and turns to that, too, and they're kind of inexorably tied to each other in that way. As one person's actions affect the other, their friendship and relationship will face a great deal of drama in the future. Speaking of drama, Violet and Carver will experience enough of it now that he's returned from his six-week leave and is traveling to Texas to see his family along with his new girlfriend. Carver declared he was done living in the past and that he didn't want to act as though they were more than just co-workers, even after Violet apologized to him. For more videos, subscribe.